This programme is about how two newly qualified teachers approach their first term of work at a busy inner city primary school. Simrit Riet and Victoria Rutherford met as PGCE students, where they became good friends. Now recruited by the same junior school to teach at Year 3, they're able to rely on a supportive school management structure and ethos of shared good practice. They're also able to continue to support each other as peers. I need to get a new and literacy presentation for you. You haven't got literacy. Educational consultant Sue Cowley has looked at Simrit and Vicky at work in their classrooms and in this programme Sue joins Simrit for some classroom coaching. But first, how does a large junior school cater for the needs of its new teachers? We've got a really good induction tutor who's had his training with the local authority. This is his second year of supporting teachers. So he knows what is required, he knows what the standards are. I feel the systems are in place in the school. We can always refine them, we can always learn a little bit more, but I think we've got it right in this school. Both of the NQTs have got um, really good rapport with the children, um, very confident in what they're doing. Um, one of the things we're developing as a, as a school, and, and we want the NQTs to do, pick up on as well, is how they uh, organise independent group work and how they give the children the tools to work independently um, and, and develop their own learning and take responsibility for their own learning and that's actually one of our, our school targets. One crucial area of work that NQTs soon encounter is how to work with parents. At Old No, the autumn term is when Year 3 have their parents' evening. This will be Simrit and Victoria's first experience of reporting pupils' progress to mums and dads, aunts and uncles, and in some cases, siblings. At Old No, they're well supported by the other staff. In this case, assistant head teacher Rebecca English. Well, at Old No, we have parents' evening in the classroom because it's a bit more of an informal setting. So the parents can come in and they can look at the children's work up on walls, they can look in the books. Every parent's expected to come once a term to talk to the teachers and find out how the children are doing and what progress they're making. Her reading level is at a 2A. Which is so what it should be. Yeah, in fact that's even further than what it should be. This is so it's more about if she's got the ideas and she's already writing, it's more about how she's organising her work. We're very lucky in this school that the parents are very supportive and they're very respectful to the teachers, um, as that's really, really positive. Um, the problem that we tend to have in this school is that a lot of parents don't speak English, and so actually getting across the message that you want to those parents can be difficult. So we have lots of translators on hand who will come in and translate for the parents. I think the most difficult thing is just talking for that amount of time because you've been talking all day anyway and you've got a couple of hours where you're talking constantly to the parents. You've got to remember everything that you need to tell them. You've got to remember the children's targets and it's quite a lot the first time you do it. His reading and his writing, oh they differ. Okay. His reading is good, his reading is a level 2C. Some parents who I didn't think were going to turn up turned up, which was good. Um, but some parents who I really wanted to turn up didn't turn up because um, I just wanted to talk to them about, you know, might be little behaviour things that they didn't do and they didn't turn up. Um, but everybody else who did turn up, it was good and I managed to say everything that I needed to say and it went well. I'm glad. <laughs> One child's parents turned up, I didn't think he would because he's quite naughty and not very, but his dad is really wants to push him wants him to do really well, which, you know, you don't expect because I just didn't think he'd turn up. I never see the parents and he's always going off with an older brother or sister. So that was a surprise, so I'm glad I spoke to him. So this is what they're going to be doing. It's teeth and eating. Okay. This time, and then I'll be pants for a while. So I could do you a copy of this. Yeah, that would be really it. helpful. Yeah. For a first time, it's nice to have that bit done because now I know what I should be saying and, you know, what the levels mean and what the parents want to know. So hopefully... Next time, those are the, you know, I'll encourage those other parents to come along and I'll be more confident, I think. I want to go home. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. 
One good way to further the continuing professional development of all staff is to bring in someone with more experience. Sue Cowley is that someone and has already analysed Simrit's teaching. She now joins her in the classroom for some classroom coaching. OK, Simrit, can you tell me a bit about what's going to happen in the lesson? Um, we're going to read through in the nativity story, not right. all of it, but just the first part. Okay. Um, and I'm going to tell them that I want them to listen to where I've got punctuation and how they can tell where the punctuation is. Um, and also to listen to the story, because the objective is to retell. Right. Um, so we'll read it through. Um, they'll talk with a partner, how could they tell where the punctuation was. Then I'll choose a child to have a go reading it. Has she found out the secret? Okay. Or he found out the secret? Um, the kind of focus we're looking at is how to deal with carpet time where they start yeah. to get restless. Yeah. So maybe if we notice that they're getting restless, I can kind of jump in and maybe do some little brain gym with them or yeah. something. The other thing I thought might be quite fun is after you've gone through the story and looked at the punctuation, mm -hmm. maybe I could read a bit of it without any punctuation and mm -hmm. have a chat to them about why is punctuation important. Yeah, that'd be because good. as well as being able to spot it, it's nice for them to understand what it does yeah. and why it's important. Yes. In our play, we've got the nativity that we're doing. With Christmas not far away, Simrit is using the nativity story to explore punctuation. Talk to your talk partner. What do I mean by punctuation? Off you go. Something that you can put in the end of the sentence, like full stops or speech marks or exclamation marks. And Priya, stop, look and listen. Right, what did I mean by punctuation? Jamal? Punctuation is like full stops, capital letters, tiny, uh, apostrophes, and explanation marks. Well done. Okay, so all those things that help us with our reading. I want you to not talk, but to whisper the secret to your talk partner. How do you hear for the punctuation? Whisper the secret. When you see a full stop, you got to take a breath. And three, stop, look and listen. Well done. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to Ahmed read this, OK? And at the end, we're going to see if Ahmed knows the secret, because if he does, he's going to use the secret to read it. Off you go, Ahmed. And so it was a few hours later, Mary gave birth to her son in the stable. She wrapped Jesus in strips of cloth and laid him in, him in a manger full of hay. Right, put your thumbs up like this if you think he's got it, if he's got the secret. And hands down like this if you don't think he's got the secret. Um, Mohammed, how did you know that he's got it? Because you've got your thumbs up. How did you know he's got because it? Because when he reads the last sentence, he closes his mouth. After that, he opens his mouth and says the sentence is... That's right, so what punctuation did he do that for? For full stop and, and commas. Yeah, good. Okay. Now, I'm going to just jump in for a moment and I'm going to show you why punctuation is so important. I'm going to go back a page and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you all to close your eyes. And because I've got my eyes open, I'll be able to tell if anybody's not closing their eyes. Now, I'm going to read this page without any punctuation, and at the end, I want you to tell me why punctuation is so important. Are you ready? This is going to sound very scrambled up. At last, Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. It was crowded with other people who needed to pay their taxes. Mary was very, very tired and needed a place to stay. At each end, the story was the same. There was no room for them. Eventually, one kind innkeeper said he had a stable where he kept his animals. They were welcome to stay there. <gasps> Open your eyes. Now... What happens when there's no punctuation? Can't hold deep breath. I know, it's terrible. I couldn't breathe at all, could I? And you had an answer as well, didn't you? Mm, you could, when you read half of it, you, 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 you turn a breath. You I had to stop. I almost fell over because I was going to faint because I couldn't breathe. And what did you think? They, they help you to breathe nicely and calm. They do. And there's one more thing. When you had your eyes shut, could you tell what the story was about? No. No, because you can't understand without punctuation. Yes. I was reading so quickly. Yeah, I was reading so quickly. Now, in a minute, I'm going to hand you back to Miss Riat. Have I said her name right? Yes. 
dear. But before I do, you know what I've noticed? I've noticed you've been sitting for a little while and you're getting a little bit fidgety like this, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do something which is called a little brain gym with you, which is a gym for your brain. In silence, we're all going to stand up. We're going to take our hands and we're going to give them a little shake like this, okay? Then using one hand, we're going to make an eight on its side. We're going to join in with our other hand, going in the other direction. Yeah. Ooh. Then we're going to freeze. And we're going to sit down. And we're going to, you know this one already, don't you? We're going to do this. Don't start. We don't need to use our mouths. Steady. Go. Oh, you were so expert at this. I think Miss Riyadh's done this with you before. Okay, and... Freeze! <laughs> that carpet time was so much better than the previous time, wasn't it? Because you chunked it up, yeah. you interspersed you talking with them giving feedback, mm -hmm. you had them coming up to do things. Did you notice how when I came in to do my bit with them, they were yeah. starting to get a little bit fidgety? And it's times like that when you do inter intersperse with a bit of brain gym, which you've obviously done with them before, don't be scared to go slightly off the topic of the lesson if it means that they have a bit of physical freedom to just let themselves go and then bring them back down. Okay. Yeah? And maybe even try some calming stuff with them as well yeah. when they're getting a bit hyper, because yeah. obviously at this time of term they'll yeah. start to get a bit hyper. But you're doing brilliantly. You're doing so well. Okay? Thank you. Red table, purple table and green table. I've been so kind to you because I've given you a sheet with the date and the learning objective already written on it. Okay. Yeah, say, aren't you kind, Miss Ria? I am. Right, okay, so you've got four pictures that we've talked about there. Red table, I want you to write at least one sentence for each, okay? One sentence for each. How many sentences, Saeed? Uh, one. Good, at least, okay? You can do more. Acting on Sue's advice, Simrit has broken up the carpet time with a short feedback activity and a bit of brain gym to keep the children alert. She's then clearly and concisely explained the tasks before allowing them to move off into their groups for some independent learning. The last thing I just wanted to touch on with you was you, I reckon, are a perfectionist, aren't you? <laughs> you want to get it all well, right. I don't know. My mum says I <laughs> Now, I think, from my perspective, you are doing fantastically well in your first term, Thank considering you. you're in your first term as an NQT. <laughs> and I can see you putting pressure on yourself to always have the class exactly under control. Sometimes, <laughs> step back and just yeah. relax. Just give yourself a couple of minutes to yourself. Yeah. Say, right, I'm just going to stop. I look around the class, keep an eye on them, but I'm just going to relax and breathe and not put, always put pressure on yourself to always be intervening, OK? I don't think I do. <laughs> you, you, maybe you're not, don't... you don't see it from yourself, but I think you set your standards really high, which oh. is great, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, think of, think of the long term as well, that, you know, you need to make sure that your own health and your own sort of, you know, you're not okay. getting too stressed <laughs> about stuff. Yeah, okay. But brilliant. Well done, Simone. Thank you.